Can you see my uh, my slideshow now? Yes. Yeah. With my uh, with my uh, <laughs> touched up picture on it. <laughs> okay, good. Right. So, does it now uh, show how to become a C uh, a CMA? I just want to be sure I got this right. Yes. Yep. All right. Very good. Uh, I want to talk with you folks. It's great to be here with you. I want to talk to you about five different uh, uh, but related things. The CMA designation, why you should uh, commit yourself to this designation, what the requirements are for the CMA, what the exam is, the what, why, when, how much, and then a few words about the uh, Wiley CMA materials that you're using in your classes or we hope that you'll be in the classes to use uh, uh, in your near future. So in terms of the CMA designation, the management accounting profession, I want to talk about what that is to begin with, because most people, when they hear accounting, they think CPA and working in a certified public accounting firm. In fact, more than 75% of accounting and finance trained professionals work uh, inside organizations, not in public CPA firms, and they're doing one or both of two types of professional accounting work. And it's important that we have these uh, terminologies clear, both for our discussion today and for your career management and strategy going forward. We have corporate reporting that happens inside organizations, and you can see that underlined here. And then we have financial planning and analysis, FP&A. Corporate reporting is more along the lines of what a CPA trained professional does in a company like Disney. Disney, for instance, will hire uh, experienced CPAs and they come to work to do corporate reporting for Disney, putting together all of their reports for external users and making sure they're in compliance with outside regulators. Disney also hires accountants and finance uh, professionals uh, largely right out of college in the case of Disney to do financial planning and analysis or FP&A. This is embedded work inside of business units, inside of the movie studios, inside of the theme parks, uh, inside of the merchandise uh, uh, business segments, and they are working to support decision making with quality, high quality financial practices to support planning and control and decision making and profitability analysis to bring value to decision making. And typically your management accounting class at Lakeland is focused on financial planning and analysis work. And the CMA exam is largely focused on financial planning and analysis work with one, with one part that does speak to the corporate reporting. If you do a CPA exam, you will be a great professional in corporate reporting and control working for a CPA firm or working in corporate reporting inside of organizations. If you do a CMA exam, you're trained to do financial planning and analysis work inside of organizations, supporting their strategy and their profitability. And of course, you can hold both designations. But today we're talking about the CMA. So management accounting, the interesting thing I found is I've never met anyone with the description, the title or the business card, management accountant. We have the Institute of Management Accountants, but the strangeness of it is there are really no one with that title. There are many titles out there of people who do the work of management accounting, finance, controller, CFO, uh, VP of finance. Typically, the word finance inside a company is associated with what you and I would call management accounting. The type of work that uh, specifically goes into the management accounting is planning, supporting management and strategic development, providing accurate information for decisions, executing on budgets and forecasting, maintaining internal controls, doing overall consulting or advisory work throughout the organization. Organizations of all kinds, government, multinational, large organizations, big and small private firms, not-for-profit organizations, and even academic institutions need a lot of management accounting to run. The IMA, the Institute of Management Accountants, there's that strange title again, is a global network with uh, more than 125,000 members in 150 countries and hundreds of professional and student chapters. I, I, hope, I hope that you've got an Institute of Management Accounting student chapter there at Lakeland. If not, you guys should get one going because it's a great organization 
that's going to support you in your uh, academic and professional development along these lines. The IMA is headquartered in uh, New Jersey, but has global uh, regions and headquarters throughout the world. The CMA has a 50% pass rate globally. Now you work with Lakeland in these two courses that they are, they've designed for you and working with the IMA, uh, with the Wiley CMA materials, the pass rate of our students in the Wiley system, in the Lakeland courses, is gonna be much higher than 50%. 4,000 CMAs are granted each year on average, and we want you to be one of them. There are more than 70,000 CMAs that have been awarded to date, all of them through the CMA exam. The CMA uh, adds value to organizations, and so organizations may not, I mean, your, your grandmother may not know what a CMA is. She probably knows what a CPA is, but I can assure you, organizations recognize Certified Management Accounting CMA is a value add to their organization that brings uh, strategic uh, strategy planning, performance, reporting and control, technology and analytics, and just overall business ability to the work of strategic thinking to convert data into dialogue and then into decisions. Becoming a CMA means you're also a member of the IMA. And being a member of the IMA or, or a similar kind of high quality professional organization generally provides a number of important things in your professional life. Specifically, the IMA, of course, as the Arbinger holds the CMA certificate and, is the, and, uh, and, and controls that certificate and supports people with that certificate. The IMA membership also provides a great networking uh, a resource to you. There are leadership opportunities to develop yourself working with and volunteering with the IMA and a lot of award-winning publications. Effectively, as a CMA and as a member of the IMA, you are sharing your brand with the brand of the IMA and the IMA's brand becomes important to your personal and professional brand as well. It's a partnership. So why should you uh, commit to becoming a CMA? Let me just back up here and point out something that actually makes me chuckle. I looked in the Robert Half Guide to Certifications for Accounting and Finance, and these are just some of the many certifications out there. Look at these, starting with the CPA and then the CMA. It's alphabet soup out there. There's all kinds of CXX certifications. Your goal should not be to gather as many letters behind your name as possible because that just, I've talked about branding a couple of times, that just mixes up and confuses your personal brand. You need, to, you need to determine what it is that you want your professional work to be about and then establish your credentials around your own strategic target, your own strategic intent, intent for your career. Should you hold both a CPA and a CMA? I think that's a great combination. I wouldn't recommend that you have a CPA, a CMA, a CFA, a CFE, a CIA, and a CFP, et cetera, because people don't know then what it is that you intend to do, what kind of work you intend to demonstrate your professional abilities within. If you have a CPA and a CMA combined, for instance, you're signaling to the world that you have made a commitment uh, in professionalism and quality in corporate reporting work and in financial planning and analysis work. Occasionally, if you have both certificates, some people may wonder why you're not working for a CPA firm. And as a holder of the CMA, that's a great question. You get to answer that question by saying, hey, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you about my CMA and how it uh, signals to you that the kind of work I do supports decision making inside of organizations. And then you get to uh, go forward and make your pitch, your elevator pitch uh, about yourself. So right now in your life, you're making decisions about how you're going to walk out into the world and present yourself. Be thoughtful about that. Be strategic about that. Being here in our uh, presentation discussion today is going to help you make those kinds of decisions about who you are going to uh, designate yourself to be. CMA is a great candidate for you uh, to build a designation around because the CMA is for professionals who want to differentiate themselves as the, with the ability of doing financial planning and analysis work. It also indicates that these professionals, you, have made a commitment 
to have skills and more and more skills in your professional toolkit. And this is uh, indicative of someone who wants to see their career accelerate and move along. So this is the value of a CMA for a professional for you. Organizations, the companies that you want to work for, also recognize and value the CMA, as I've mentioned. They use the CMA designation to help them fill in gaps in their professional employment teams. They've got a particular skill they need. They know that skill is represented by someone with the CMA. They look for someone with the CMA and they prioritize them into these positions. This uh, signals to employers that this is an employee, the CMA, who cares about their continuing education. And oftentimes organizations then support and encourage people to get a CMA because this is how they build the HR function of their organization and gives them assurance that the people they're hiring and promoting, in fact, are able to do the job uh, that these companies need done, the kind of job that the CMA indicates you're capable of doing. Now, you probably care a little bit about compensation as well. The IMA does a global salary survey every year to, uh, to see what the impact is on our salaries of having a CMA. This is the difference. This is globally overall. Uh, this survey was done a couple of years ago, these data, but the data have held pretty con constant year on year. Uh, accountants, people with an accounting degree who don't have a CMA certification, and this also includes a CPA certification. So non-certified accountants versus accountants with a CMA, those CMAs are earning on average 50% uh, more throughout their life. So this CMA, this, uh, this decision that you're looking at making, and we hope that you do make this commitment right now that the CMA is going to be part of your life, can be a way for you to uh, uh, make a, a, a big statement and move forward with, uh, with speed and with focus in your own career and, be, and come into organizations and help strengthen those organizations so that they can move forward on their goals as well. All right, so that's kind of the overall pitch deck, if you will, on uh, considering a CMA in your professional life and reaching for that CMA before you graduate from Lakeland, which we're going to strongly endorse to you. What a great partnership that is that Lakeland has with the IMA and the CMA uh, certification to build it right into the curriculum there. These requirements, if you're not aware, let me just be specific about these requirements and we can answer some questions for you later if you'd like. The a CMA uh, designation assumes that you've got a basic understanding of economics and statistics and financial accounting. It's not going to test on economics or statistics. It does test to some extent on financial accounting, but it assumes that you've got uh, some education along those lines. Then you've got these two exam parts and you pass them both. You need a bachelor's degree, of course, so be sure to graduate from a, an accredited school just like Lakeland. It actually doesn't matter what major you have. The IMA assumes that if you can pass the CMA exam that you've got the knowledge you need. So they don't require you to have a specific type of major in your college degree, though most candidates hold either a degree in accounting or finance. The degree does need to be earned within seven years of passing the CMA on one side or the other. You also need professional experience, two years of professional work experience that can be fulfilled within seven years on either side of passing the exam. What kind of experience? Well, any kind of experience that involves finance or accounting inside of an organization or for a CPA firm is largely going to be quali uh, qualified uh, experience for this designation. Bottom line, I'm not too worried about professional work experience for you. You graduate from Lakeland with a degree in accounting or finance. You have a CMA uh, designation. The job you're going to get will qualify as the professional work experience you need to finish this uh, and be a holder of the certificate. You need to maintain active membership in the IMA. And then for the rest of your life, you make a commitment to of continuing professional education. We call that CPE continuing professional education. You need to do about 30 hours a year. That includes two hours of ethics training and just maintain that IMA membership. Uh, I'm not concerned for any of you in terms of your ability to maintain 30 hours of CPE. If you're a professional 
working forward in her uh, professional career, working in a great organization. Your organization is going to provide you the opportunities to continually develop yourself as a professional, and you'll get those hours easily. Uh, so the, the wonderful thing about the CMA versus the CPA, now I don't know the exact uh, um, rules for Wisconsin. Every state maintains their own licensing rules for the CPA. The CMA is not a license. The CMA is strictly a certificate. And so the, uh, the rules to sit for the CMA exam are nationally consistent and are maintained by the IMA, which means you can sit for the CMA exam while you're a student. And this is why Lakeland has incorporated it directly into their curriculum, uh, sitting for these two exam parts. I expect that you've got to uh, be graduated or nearly graduated from the university before you're able to sit for the CPA. So it's lovely that the CMA, you can jump on this right now and have this box checked along with uh, completing your degree. Uh, this next slide is there in case we've got any professionals here with us today, which I don't think we do, but probably the majority of people sitting for the CMA are in uh, in a professional position, but an increasing percentage of candidates for the CMA are students just like you. All right, more specifics about the CMA exam. So it is, as uh, we've talked about in two parts, and I think you're aware of that. That's why you've got a part for each of these two courses that Lakeland set up. Each part of the exam is four hours in length. The first three hours are composed of 100 multiple choice questions the last hour are two essay questions. Um, you have to spend, and it's just kind of an interesting aspect of how the logistics of this exam works. You need to spend a minimum of one hour on the essay, and you are allowed a maximum of three hours on the multiple choice questions, which means that first you do the multiple choice questions, and as soon as you're done, and you click that you're done, it moves you into the essay part of the exam. You can start that essay part uh, in less than three hours if you'd like, but at the end of three hours, it's gonna force you over to the essay questions. You're gonna be receiving great training on preparing for these multiple choice questions and these essay questions as part of your courses there at Lakeland with the support of the uh, Wiley material. We've got, or the IMA has provided uh, a content specification outline that is going to lay out in a lot of detail every element in terms of topics on the exam. This slide deck I'll make available uh, to your professor and he can uh, get it uh, disseminated to you. But this, uh, uh, but you can go to the imanet.org, www.imanet.org, and just search on CMA contents specification outline and it will pop up. Uh, this document that you can download and I recommend you get it and keep it in your files. Uh, the files where you are keeping all of your CMA preparation materials. That's a little leftover from when I was working with uh, some students in China last month. Okay, the parts of uh, part one are in six sections. The first section is financial reporting. This is basically financial accounting and it forms 15% of part one. The rest of the parts are more along the lines of financial planning and analysis. We're gonna work on planning and budgeting and forecasting in what we call section B. In section C, performance management, which is 20% of the exam, is where we're gonna see costs and variance, uh, variance accounting. If you've been doing variance performance measures, that's where you're gonna see this on the exam. Uh, Section D, cost management, that's 15% of the exam, is where we get into costing, job order costing, process costing, and into some topics from, if you've had an operations or supply chain class, supply chain management, business process improvement, total quality management, that's there in cost management. Internal controls, it's got a little bit, if you're an accounting major and you've had or will have an auditing class, a lot of these topics uh, in the internal controls section are in an auditing course, but you don't have to complete a course in auditing. The, uh, the uh, two courses that Lakeland is providing for you is going to give you the training you need for internal controls. The very newest uh, 
part or section of the exam is technology and analytics, which is here in part one. Information systems, data governance, visualization, analytics, technology enabled finance tools. This is a this is a new skills area and a lot of employers out there are pretty enthused that the CMA exam is designating part of the uh, focus to technology and analytics. That's good news for you. Part two is strategic financial management. Now there are two basic overall themes between part one and part two. Part one is primarily accounting. Part two is primarily finance. So your finance class or classes are gonna be represented quite a bit here on part two with basic financial statement analysis ratios in the first uh, section A, 20%, core corporate finance, risk return, capital asset pricing model, uh, corporate structure and how we structure for debt versus equity. That's all in the corporate finance section. Decision analysis is actually more along the lines of management accounting. CVP, cost, volume, profit, or break-even analysis, and marginal analysis or relevant decision-making and pricing, that's in section C there. Section D is risk management. Not a lot of colleges and universities are teaching risk management in their curriculum right now, but you're gonna see risk management in your course there at Lakeland, the course that for focuses on part two, and that is a value add in your skill set because far too few business students are graduating with any understanding of risk management and risk management models. Investment decisions there, uh, part D of, or section D of part two, this is capital budgeting. If you've had any capital budgeting, time value of money analysis, discounted cash flow rates, that is all uh, there in this uh, section about investment decisions. And then the last section is professional ethics. Professional ethics, every professional organization has their standard for ethical behavior and ethical decision making. And what is expected in terms of how to approach different ethical situations. The IMA has its own personal standard and structure around professional ethics. If you've had or will have a course in business ethics there at your university, you'll see some of that content here but your courses that are specifically designated for parts one and part two are gonna help, uh, help you understand the IMA code of professional ethics. Now, when do you take the exam? This is a computer-based exam that has testing windows. January and February is a testing window that when you can take one or both parts and then it goes quiet for two months in March and April while they're grading the exams from January and February. And then we open a new window, the IMA does, and it tests again, May, June, goes quiet and then tests again in September, October. So two months testing, two months off, two months testing again. You can take both parts in one testing window or spread it out. Once you enroll in the CMA exam program, so you join the IMA and you enroll as a CMA candidate. Once you do that, you need to complete both parts within three years. That won't be a problem for you with the uh, partnership you have with your school there. Uh, Lakeland is helping you move through these uh, exams very, very quickly, which is wonderful. And of course, you're gonna be graduating within seven years, so you've got no problem with that aspect. This is a picture of a ProMetric Center you may have a testing center there at Lakeland that looks similar to this. You come into the uh, exam setting and they set you up on in front of a computer monitor. You get logged in and you spend four hours there completing your exam. Uh, we always recommend that uh, you bring or headsets to so that you have nice, quiet kind of exam setting. They have headsets you can check out there that just make sure that you're not having to hear anyone next to you. Um, of course, during COVID, this has been a little tough managing uh, test taking for ProMetric, but we're coming out of COVID and these ProMetric centers, have, um, they've got a, you know, a clean and safe testing environment all figured out. If you want to learn more about how ProMetric testing centers work, you can go to www.prometric.com and then ICMA, Institute uh, for CMA, and that will... Uh, allow you to see how you schedule yourself to take an exam. 
Here are the fees. Um, students have deeply discounted fees to join the IMA, $39 versus $245. The entrance fee to join the CMA uh, exam program is $188. There may be a discount that your university has worked out with the IMA on that fee. The exam fee is $311 per part. Uh, and that's uh, that is consistent across the world. Uh, working with the CMA Excel Wiley material, which is I'm an author of, uh, we're again really excited about this partnership between Lakeland and Wiley to bring these materials into your classroom here. Uh, they're really effective, media-rich materials with lots of videos. Yours truly is in some of these lessons, along with uh, a partnership of colleagues, dear colleagues of mine who provide uh, lessons and videos on other sections of the exam prep course. We work on making these lessons very short and bite size. There's a video for each lesson. There's a very short outline of writing that you can read through, and then lots and lots of practice. Practicing the questions is, that's the main focus where you should be in getting ready to uh, take uh, and pass these exams successfully. Uh, once you're in the uh, Wiley system, if you don't happen to pass at the end of your course, if you're in the Wiley system, you're just part of our family and we stay with you, but you're gonna pass the first time. Uh, hopefully you enjoy working with me and my team. We've invested a number of years into the, developing these materials and Wiley has committed a ton of resources to make the uh, delivery great and really uh, compelling. People who are in the Wiley system, we have an 80% pass rate. Remember, across the world, it's 50% pass rate first time. Our pass rate first time is 80%, uh, but you stay with us. Everyone else is getting through uh, the CMA exam with the Wiley material there. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn the time back over. I've got these classic best practices to success, but this is for people who don't have a partnership program like Lakeland where you're actually in